coast there was really not much to see. Um, even around where we are there's not a huge deal but we're following Google's recommendations and we're going to go and see a bunch of rocks today. So it's going to be a really exciting video for you guys. Good morning. This is tourist guide sir, government guide. The main temple, short temple, seven monument inside. So it's a dormant. All monument inside. We don't know summer season. It's no okay. job. No, so. we just want to walk. We just want to walk. Yeah, listen. Look, see that? Yeah. See 600? Yeah. That, that's Indian expensive. expensive. Again, it's 12 times the price for us to get in. Alright, after paying $20 for entry, let's go and see some rocks. We're here, and yes, we do earn more money. So let's we just. We do earn more money, but I do think it's worth it. I think it's rude the amount more that we have to. Yeah. We don't mind paying like five times the amount, but 12? 12 times? That's inflation. <laughs> All right, group of monuments. <sighs> what more can I say about it? It's... You never know anything about it, do you? What more can I say? Oh, so these stone carvings were carved over a thousand years ago. Over to you, Yana. Let me take it from here. We are at the Group of Monuments at Mahabali Puram. This is a collection of 7th and 8th century religious monuments. The history of this place actually has many speculations and disagreements to its purpose and early life. Even Marco Polo wrote about it in his travels. The buildings that we're at now in particular, are temples attributed to the reign of the Pallava king Rajasimha. It's amazing how they carved this out of the most primitive tools well over a thousand years ago. Like, look at it. The detail in this would have been unreal a thousand years ago when it happened. This would have all been painted too. All pretty colours. Like, it just would have, just would have looked unreal. Now, it's just a decaying home for the pigeons. to run. Yes, you, run! Ah! Okay, so we went to the first temple there and um, as we were leaving we actually met a guy and he said, look, just follow me, It'll, we'll, I'll take you to the next temple because we were struggling to figure out where to park for our next temple. Um, and he's he's actually a stonemason around the corner there. He's got really great English so we've decided, so he's just offered to um, walk us around and so yeah, we're gonna do it and yeah, check it out. Leap. Dilip. Philip D. D. And Dilip. Luke. Luke. Yep. Yana. Yana. Nice to meet you. Jesse. Jesse. Nice to meet you. Dilip. They made a four type of temples. The first architecture was a cave architecture. They found a rock here only. They don't brought rock from anywhere. It was naturally here. Then they made a cave style. And the second one they called Ratha. Ratha which means chariot. Stone chariot. Oh, we've seen the stone chariot. Yeah, the yeah. One, one kilometer from here. Yeah. That the chariot means you think it far with wheel, it moves somewhere. It's not that. It's just a model only. <laughs> this is called a stone chariot. Then the uh, third one we call open pass relief. The one you see there with big elephant. Yeah. Yep. And you found them. Yep. That was an open pass relief. Then the fourth one, stone by stone. That's the one in the beach. Yeah. The short temple, yep. which is not monolithic. It's built. Yeah. Yep. They brought rock from the mountain to carry there. Most of these monuments were buried under sand. So in 1974, the Prime Minister saw it and then requested help from UNESCO to excavate and uncover them. 16 years later, in 1990, UNESCO finally agreed. This is one stone actually. This is monolithic. Yeah. Yeah. This pillar on the roof, they add it later. Yeah. yeah. Which is done by Vijayanagara dynasty, which is king from Hampi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, made, who came yeah, here. Actually, it's very similar it's, to the Hampi yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Carved out of the side of this massive rock 1400 years ago. It's monolithic. This small cave-like sanctum is meant to have really good vibrations for meditating and omming. <laughs> so this is the second biggest relief architecture in a rock in the world. Second biggest. First one's in Cambodia, this is the second. 
Tai. Huge. We have epic story of Hindu, which is called Mahabharata. The rest of the Bata, he don't know what to do. He just take from part and he throw it here. What people believe, that was not real. But the local imagination called Butterball. Real name, we call a natural balance rock, which, which is standing on center of gravity. Yeah. Maybe you go and push, rock will roll. You name writing in the Guinness. <laughs> yeah. Gown. Give it a push. Oh wow, look at that. It's just balanced. They got seven elephants to try and pull this rock over and it wouldn't move. Yeah, go, push. Oh, it moved. That's unreal. It's just balanced there so perfectly. I don't know how it got there. Look at this little tongue. <laughs> He's gonna go and try and push it. I'm fitting. I'm on the other side now. 1500 years back, we don't have machines for a gunpowder, yeah. or kind of electricity, nothing. So they want to split the rock to carry a rock to the sea. They're yeah. going to make the show temple. So yep. how they split the rock, you know, first made a hole like this, almost two, three inch deeper. Yeah. Then they bring the piece of wood inside the, they're pulling into the wood, uh, pulling into the hole. Yep. Yep. Then they pour hot water every day. When wood get wet and wood expand, yep. the stone get cracked. Oh, it took yeah, really? 90 days nearly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. So, um, Philip's just given us an amazing tour and told us so much about everything um, in that area. And he's actually also a stonemason, so we're going to go check out his shop as well. I want to get myself a little Vishnu statue because I got myself a Ganesh last time. And I figure every time I come to India, I can get myself a new god and collect them all. The works in here are amazing. Um, like if you have a look, look at how detailed that is. It's just gorgeous. Next time you come. So if you're ever in this area and you need someone who's got really good English, um, hit up Delete. I will put his WhatsApp on your on the description. Um, and yeah, if you're struggling to find someone or you don't want to get ripped off, hit him up. Thank you, mate. Thank Thanks, you. Take mate. care, mate. See ya. Come across this little bus stop. Everyone's standing here waiting for the bus, including the cows. Um, I think they want to go downtown. Where you want to head today, ma'am? She says she wants to go shopping for a new sari. How nice. We spent the afternoon walking around the local neighborhood and meeting all the animals on the way. Puppies! Hello! Hello! Oh, hello! hello. That was the best yeah. greeting ever. Hello! Hello! Hi! Hello, baby! Hello! Hello! Can we pet your babies? <laughs> can we pet your babies? <laughs> can we pet your babies? Can we pet your babies? Come on! Puppies! Yeah. Oh, good girl. Yeah, that's my camera. <laughs> good girl. She's woken up. Now that is a big cough. I said that. Look at the size of that thing. That is a prize rooster right there. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Cow. I'm the cow whisperer. <laughs> <laughs>